Hi. Hi guys. So welcome to this talk about Ethereum, Bitcoin, uh, RPC API. So if you remember in the last talk, uh, he mentioned about JSON RPC APIs in the presentation. So I'm planning to go deeper into that topic uh, with Ethereum and Bitcoin. Uh, how that JSON RPC is working and how you can connect to those APIs uh, with your own node without using any third party like Blog Explorer or else Etherscan or someone else third party APIs. So this will be good for programmers, developers who would like to start working on Ethereum Bitcoin stuff uh, <coughs> after this conference. Uh, or else from today onwards. So it will be a good chance for you to uh, start your uh, career with blockchain uh, things. So I'm Dilum Nawanjana and this is my GitHub and this is my Twitter. If you have any questions after this uh, talk, you can just tweet me and I will reply. I'm from, uh, even though I'm working here in Singapore. I'm from this little South Asian island called Sri Lanka. Hope at least you have heard about Sri Lanka. And in Sri Lanka, we have nice beaches and we have uh, tea plantations and especially we have elephants. And I'm a core team member of Celluloid. Uh, if you haven't heard about Celluloid, Celluloid is a concurrency and parallel processing third party uh, tool or else a gem in Ruby, uh, working with Ruby Foundation. So I'm a code uh, team member of Celluloid, working with them and going around Asia, talking about concurrency, parallel processing, but here today I'm talking about blockchain stuff. And according to the Ruby Foundation's uh, founder's definition, I'm a Rubyist. And here uh, in Singapore, I'm working in a, a startup called B Bytes, and mainly we are working with Ruby stuff, uh, Ruby uh, backend development, uh, APIs and everything. And also, especially we are working with uh, blockchain, private blockchains, public blockchains, like private blockchains like uh, BigchainDB. And we are working with uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, smart contracts, uh, so on, yes. And we are hiring, yes. Uh, if any of you are uh, familiar with developments with big uh, blockchain and any decentralized payment platforms yes we would like to talk with you so after this talk or else i'll be here around this conference maybe today and tomorrow and sunday so just come to me and talk to me we are hiring and we have our own ico up and running these days uh, for a future plan of having a decentralized payment platform so it is bigtk.io if you would like to have how big token uh, is going to disrupt this decentralized payment platform or else uh, how, we are, how we are going to uh, have our own tokens, just have a look. And this is a technical presentation, uh, but I am not going to define what's cryptocurrency or else uh, I am not going to define what is Bitcoin or else what is Ethereum because we have just 20 minutes, 25 minutes and you can just go to Google and just search for those things. Uh, but as developers, we all love APIs. So when we start working on something, if we want to learn new things, the first thing that we would like to search in uh, online is APIs. Are there any exposed APIs for this technology or else uh, for this framework that we can use in our existing existing uh, serv services or else applications. So that's what uh, I also did when I uh, was assigned to do some blockchain uh, works with Ethereum and Bitcoin uh, <coughs> in my workplace. So then <coughs> as I checked all cryptocurrencies I checked uh, have APIs exposed from their nodes uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, so on. Uh, so <coughs> to use or else to consume those APIs, uh, to consume those RPC APIs, we need a node up and running or else a daemon up and running. 
Uh, for testing purposes, I prefer to have a Docker container uh, which runs those daemons or else nodes. Uh, this is the Bitcoin daemon uh, container that I created for my testing purposes. If you would like to have a look, it is just a Bitcoin daemon inside a container and you can just uh, <coughs> start this Docker container and consume those uh, RPC APIs. It's open source, just uh, have a look and if you want, you can use it as well. And this is the uh, Ethereum Docker container that I used. Uh, actually, I created uh, this uh, Ethereum uh, container. Inside this container, it's uh, there's a Ethereum node running. So it is easy for you. You don't have to install any get or else any C++ libraries. All of the, uh, them are inside this container. You just have to run this Docker container and it will be, the node will be up. But you have to uh, start syncing your <coughs> Uh, node up after running this container or else uh, if you would like to have your own daemon or else node you can run you can in, uh, install whatever the uh, things that you need to install uh, before running the daemon and then start running your own daemon so you have your own daemon or else node running in your local host so after that Connecting to this RPC APIs as sim uh, uh, like as simple as uh, running this curl command to this port uh, in your local host, so that it's that much of simple to connect to those RPC APIs. So Ethereum has their own uh, inter-process communication IPC APIs and as well as remote procedure call RPC. We call uh, RPC APIs uh, exposed. And Bitcoin has their own remote procedure calls uh, only. And this is the Bitcoin RPC API documentation. And this is more. So uh, if you want to just look at uh, how these APIs works, RPC APIs works, just go uh, to those documentations and you can see there are like so many APIs exposed uh, from these <coughs> RPC API APIs from the nodes and you can uh, use those APIs to have like your own uh, like a Bitcoin client or else uh, something that you can use for your own use or else to uh, there are so many things that you can do. And this is the AR, Ethereum RPC API documentation link. So you can just go there and this is a common RPC API that you can use. Uh, if you are consuming those APIs, you don't need to unlock your any of your wallets. You can just uh, use those APIs and uh, consume those transaction uh, <coughs> like you can get block uh, details uh, using the block hash or else you can get the transaction details uh, using the transaction hash you don't have to unlock your wallet for those kind of information or else uh, you can get your account uh, account means wallet IDs uh, inside this <coughs> uh, node and also you can get uh, whatever the wallets balance uh, using those APIs so this is the API documentation, detailed documentation for uh, get balance. So there are two parameters you have to pass. Uh, so the wallet ID and as well as the, if you want to uh, get the latest balance, you have to pass latest. So you, then you can get <coughs> any of the wallets, uh, Ethereum wallets balance from uh, using this API. And this is the Ethereum management API, which is, more powerful than uh, the normal APIs. Uh, uh, these management APIs we can use for your wallet related things like unlock your wallet, lock your wallet or else create a new wallet and send a transaction especially if you would like to use this API to send a transaction you can use that as well. Uh, from like uh, if you want to send a transaction programmatically from like a, from your server application side without using any graphical uh, client you can use those APIs to send the transaction but 
to send the transaction you have to unlock your wallet using that unlock uh, api and then you can send those transactions so this is the api uh, detailed documentation uh, what you have to pass <clears throat> to unlock your wallet you have to pass the wallet id and as well as the wallet passphrase uh, and then how many seconds you need this wallet to be unlocked so this is uh, in this example it is 30 seconds so after 30 seconds your wallet will be locked automatically default is around 300 seconds as i remember so <clears throat> because i love ruby and i'm working with ruby most of the uh, time uh, using this uh, rpc apis for bitcoin and ethereum right now i created a gem called el chapo uh, so this is actually a Ruby wrapper for this RPC API. If you would like to have a, and any of you are familiar with Ruby or else if you if any of you are uh, any of you would like to uh, learn Ruby uh, and using Ruby in your server side, then this will be a good chance for you to use those RPC APIs uh, in Ruby very easily other than just uh, calling uh, REST clients. The name this El Chapo is coming from some funny stories and the reason is um, one day I can come to a conference like this uh, and I can say to people that I am the creator of El Chapo so that's, that's the reason this gem called El Chapo uh, came to me. And this is the gem, how it works. Uh, you can create Bitcoin HTTP connection new and you have to send the uh, URL and <coughs> the port and as well as uh, when you are running, uh, starting your Bitcoin client, uh, node, you have to send, you have to mention your username and password uh, for the RPC client and you have to pass this username, the same username and password for this uh, Bitcoin <coughs> wrapper so then uh, using this btc underscore client you can uh, use those uh, rpc apis uh, as a method call <coughs> in your ruby code so then i managed to do my connection between my ruby server side rails server side and as uh, with a bitcoin or else ethereum client uh, so my work uh, office related work is done but uh, on a weekend I was so bored and I didn't have any plans to do and because I had this gym with me uh, and I wanted to do something interesting so I got the idea to convert blockchain con to convert a blockchain to SQL so this is my initial idea but then I <coughs> managed to uh, like con uh, <coughs> do this to something like this so this is my initial this was my initial plan few months ago to convert all Bitcoin transactions to HQL so uh, the reason that I wanted to do <coughs> convert everything to SQL is to find the highest transaction value happened inside Bitcoin so today I will tell you what are the what are those transactions happened in this uh, Bitcoin and what's the date and everything so after converting so um, last week I managed to finish all the conversion from the block 1 to 500k plus uh, right now uh, so what I did was I was going through the blocks uh, from 0 to 500k plus uh, from a Ruby just a Ru from a Ruby script and this is an example that I am getting uh, for a Bitcoin block. Uh, so it has so many information like uh, the Bitcoin hash, uh, block hash and the size and everything. And then the most important thing is the transactions, num uh, IDs, hash, hashes for this block. So it's an array and inside, uh, once I found this transaction IDs, then I read through those transactions and this is what I get for the transaction row details. So each transaction I get uh, who is the sender, who is the receiver and what's the value and everything. Uh, so I wrote the Ruby script and I used ActiveRecord uh, 
to save it to my SQL and then this is a uh, example of my database I am I'm saving the block uh, number and transaction ID, the block hash and the most important thing is the value and the transaction created date and updated is, is that uh, that I updated the date and sender receiver and the balance receiver. So I, ha I had all details of these uh, <coughs> uh, for all transactions of Bitcoin right now. So initially I thought it will take maximum five days, but I was wrong. Uh, it took me around like more than one month to finish everything. Uh, so <clears throat> on the process after like two weeks, I realized uh, my script uh, was not the most uh, powerful script that I could run uh, to con convert everything. So I used a gem uh, or else, uh, a method called bulk insert to insert uh, 500 trans uh, transactions by 500 transactions to my MySQL database, uh, which uh, makes it a little bit faster, but not fast enough to uh, finish it within a few days. So by last week, <coughs> actually, I managed to finish everything. So the database contained uh, 236,915,620 transactions uh, and the database size is 76.63 GB MySQL database. Uh, this is uh, it's some example and my initial plan was to find the highest value transferred within Bitcoin and few more researches after going on uh, with my database because I have the sender and I have the receiver. So <clears throat> like I have some more information about the transaction happened through uh, the uh, Bitcoin network. So <clears throat> oh, uh, this is the highest transaction happened within 2009. Uh, so within 2009, uh, the year of 2009, the highest value transferred is 6,000 uh, bitcoins. Uh, it happens on this day. So I, I will go through uh, the year by year first of all and then I will uh, give you what's the highest value. And in 2010, it is 90,000 bitcoins. The, the transaction happened on November 9th, uh, 2010 and 2011 it is uh, almost 500k Bitcoin, uh, so it is happened on November 16, 2011 and in 2012 it went down to uh, 125,000 Bitcoins transferred on this day in a transaction and 2013 it is this and 14 it is this, uh, 15 uh, it is this, 16 it is this and 17 it is 50,000 exactly 50,000 uh, transferred on August 12th uh, August 2nd 2017 which was about like eight months ago and so the highest transaction of all the time what goes to uh, the transaction happened on 2011 uh, November 16th uh, on block uh, uh, in, in this block, uh, that is four hundred and ninety nine thousand seven hundred twenty point seven bi uh, bitcoins transferred. So, if you go to this block uh, on Block Explorer, you can see that transaction. Uh, on this block, there were like about three transactions, and one transaction is this transaction. Uh, but <coughs> the highest transaction value in USD. So at, at the transaction time, uh, if you uh, take this transaction, uh, convert it into USD, uh, in 2011 it was about like 2 million USDs, uh, which was not the best uh, in comparing to other transactions. So the highest transaction value in USD award goes to this transaction, uh, 2017, 50, uh, 50,000 uh, bitcoins. So in this, uh, I checked the price of bitcoin on August 2nd, 2017. Uh, on that day, it was about uh, 
2700 USD uh, the one Bitcoin and because of that that transaction value in USD is about 135 million uh, <laughs> USD uh, transferred on that day which was like eight months ago <clears throat> and if you want to uh, check all the transaction details uh, I have uh, this is my blog uh, I have mentioned all the blog explorer transaction URLs there uh, in a blog post uh, with all those uh, year, years transactions and everything so if you uh, want to have a look detailed look uh, on those transactions just go to this uh, uh, just go to my blog and it will be there okay I think it's done and any questions? I have a question. Did you add any indexes? Uh, no, I'm planning to <laughs> write some indexes, yes, because uh, so right now if I uh, uh, write a query for uh, searching the highest value within this, it takes like three minutes uh, to complete the query. So it is, yeah, I need to write some indexes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, uh, I ha I have some plans. To, uh, I don't need to uh, keep it secret as a database uh, with me. I would like to share this database. So <coughs> because it, uh, I got this database last week, uh, I will upload it to somewhere. And like uh, first of all, I need to check how I can compress the database uh, into seven zip or something, and then I will share it with public. Yes, for sure. Are One. You are you keeping it in sync with the uh, yes, I can do it uh, uh, like in real time. Uh, not right now, but uh, so right now the speed of converting everything is I can convert uh, one month transactions uh, within one day. So uh, so like I have almost until the start of this month uh, transactions converted. So if I run like one day uh, it will be <coughs> synced and like yes uh, because I am using one of my personal machines to do this uh, right now the script is stopped but if I start it will uh, start syncing every day. What's the next step in the project? Mm, I need to create a graph from uh, actually what I need to do is so because I have all the transactions uh, with me I need to calculate who has the highest value in his wallet, uh, in user's wallet uh, right now and maybe I will sort from highest to lowest the uh, wallets and then maybe I will publish and I will write a blog post. <laughs> yeah. So your, Docker, so your Docker client downloads the whole chain. Yep. So what's the size of the chain right now? Oh, uh, so, uh, my docker client i was using it for my testing purposes but uh, the docker client uh, in, in the main network can couldn't handle uh, that much of uh, syncing database in bitcoin so i had to use my own docker de uh, bitcoin daemon inside my machine right so what's the size of the chains at the moment mm, i'm not pretty much sure yes it's the uh, normal size around like 200 gb as i remember yeah it's over 200 yeah any questions? Yes. Uh, are you going to expose your HTTP, um, the HTTP APIs you created in any way to public so that you don't have to download the blockchain? Uh, the transactions. No, just your API, because you already have the blockchain on your machine. Yes, so those APIs are public APIs, uh, those RPC APIs. Uh, your, I, web, your web. Uh, my database, the SQL database uh, I downloaded, is it? Like if I want to, instead of me downloading the blockchain to my machine, mm -hmm. can I just simply access your new Ruby? Uh, oh, Ru uh, Ruby, uh, that's a Ruby wrapper actually. Uh, it's not connect. Uh, if you have a node running and then only you can uh, connect to your uh, node using my wrapper, yeah. You have a quick check. Uh, I have a question. <coughs> I think it's a share of this uh, API access to blockchain, uh, Bitcoin blockchain is a very good, uh, not, not with everyone. So I think with a few of you can do this, then upload the whole blockchain into the website database, hmm. and share your API to us. So you can call, and, call yeah. the, all the history. Yeah. 
Yeah. Can we explain to you what the what the uh, setup you want? Maybe uh, the yes. The transaction mm -hmm. within this month. How, uh, how many transaction are we send send out? How many transaction are we uh, from maybe from exchange or? Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yes, uh, I have some plans because I have all the senders and receivers. Maybe uh, so. <laughs> one of the researchers uh, contacted me, asked me to uh, create some uh, f uh, using this database. Something like uh, if you remember that Windows uh, virus that got affected last year, ransomware. So they ask. Uh, to pay them using Bitcoin. So if, if you have some uh, way that we can track those uh, that uh, Bitcoin wallets uh, and like uh, check those wallets, how, uh, how uh, they spend their wallet money and those kind of things. Uh, so if I use this database for those kind of things, so I might uh, <coughs> do some uh, graphs, something like that. If if you enter a wallet ID, then you can see uh, what are the past transactions he got and uh, what are the uh, things that he spent on and where he spends on, like uh, what are the other wallets that he connected and everything. So, which will be like more interesting for the people. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.